Thomas Hardy was an English novelist and poet. A Victorian realist in the tradition of George Eliot, he was influenced both in his novels and in his poetry by Romanticism, including the poetry of William Wordsworth. He was highly critical of much in Victorian society, especially on the declining status of rural people in Britain, such as those from his native southwest England. Thomas Hardy was born on June 2, 1840 in Hirebach Hampton, a hamlet in the parish of Stinsford to the east of Dorchester in Dorset, England, where his father Thomas worked as a stonemason and local builder, and married his mother Jemima in Beminster, towards the end of 1839. Jemima was well read, and she educated Thomas until he went to his first school at Bockhampton at the age of eight. For several years he attended Mr. Last's Academy for Young Gentlemen in Dorchester, where he learned Latin and demonstrated academic potential. Because Hardy's family lacked the means for a university education, his formal education ended at the age of 16, when he became apprentice to James Hicks, a local architect. Hardy trained as an architect in Dorchester before moving to London in 1862, there he enrolled as a student at King's College London. He won prizes from the Royal Institute of British Architects and the Architectural Association. He joined Arthur Blomfield's practice as assistant architect in April 1862 and worked with Blomfield on All Saints Parish Church in Windsor, Berkshire in 1862-64. A rear dos, possibly designed by Hardy, was discovered behind panelling at All Saints in August 2016. In the mid-1860s, Hardy was in charge of the excavation of part of the graveyard of St. Pancras Old Church prior to its destruction when the Midland Railway was extended to a new terminus at St. Pancras. Hardy never felt at home in London, because he was acutely conscious of class divisions and his social inferiority. During this time he became interested in social reform and the works of John Stuart Mill. He was introduced by his Dorset friend Horace Mill to the works of Charles Fourier and Auguste Comte. Mill's essay on liberty was one of Hardy's cures for despair, and in 1924 he declared that my pages show harmony of view with Mill. He was also attracted to Matthew Arnold's and Leslie Stevens' ideal of the urbane liberal freethinker. After five years, concerned about his health, he returned to Dorset, settling in Weymouth, and decided to dedicate himself to writing. In 1870, while on an architectural mission to restore the parish church of St. Juliet in Cornwall, Hardy met and fell in love with Emma Gifford, whom he married in Kensington in late 1874. Renting St. David's Villa, Southborough for a year. In 1885 Thomas and his wife moved into Maxgate, a house designed by Hardy and built by his brother. Although they, later became estranged, Emma's subsequent death in 1912 had a traumatic effect on him and after her death, Hardy made a trip to Cornwall to revisit places linked with their courtship, his poems 1912-13 reflect upon her death. In 1914, Hardy married his secretary Florence Emily Dugdale, who was 39 years his junior. He remained preoccupied with his first wife's death and tried to overcome his remorse by writing poetry. In his later years, he kept a wire fox terrier named Wessex, who was notoriously ill-tempered. Wessex's gravestone can be found on the Maxgate grounds. Lane 1910, Hardy had been appointed a member of the Order of Merit and was also for the first time nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature. He was nominated again for the prize 11 years later. Hardy was horrified by the destruction caused by First World War, pondering that I do not think a world in which such fiendishness is possible to be worth the saving and better to let Western civilization perish, and let the black and yellow races have a chance. He wrote to John Galsworthy that the exchange of international thought is the only possible salvation for the world. Hardy became ill with pleurisy in December 1927 and died at Maxgate just after 9 p.m. on January 11, 1928, having dictated his final poem to his wife on his deathbed, the cause of death was cited, on his death certificate, as cardiac syncope, with old age given as a contributory factor. His funeral was on 16th of January at Westminster Abbey, and it proved a controversial occasion because Hardy had wished for his body to be interred at Stinsford in the same grave as his first wife, Emma. His family and friends concurred, however, his executor, Sir Sidney Carlyle Cockerell, insisted that he be placed in the Abbey's famous Poet's Corner. A compromise was reached whereby his heart was buried at Stinsford with Emma, and his ashes in Poet's Corner. Hardy's estate at death was valued at £95,418. Shortly after Hardy's death, the executors of his estate burned his letters and notebooks, but twelve notebooks survived one of them containing notes and extracts of newspaper stories from the 1820s, and research into these has provided insight into how Hardy used them in his works. 
In the year of his death Mrs. Hardy published The Early Life of Thomas Hardy, 1841-1891, compiled largely from contemporary notes, letters, diaries, and biographical memoranda, as well as from oral information and conversations extending over many years. Hardy's work was admired by many younger writers, including D. H. Lawrence, John Cooper Powys, and Virginia Woolf. In his autobiography Goodbye to All That, 1929, Robert Graves recalls meeting Hardy in Dorset in the early 1920s and how Hardy received him and his new wife warmly, and was encouraging about his work. Hardy's birthplace in Bockhampton and his house Maxgate, both in Dorchester, are owned by the National Trust. Hardy's first novel, The Poor Man and the Lady, finished by 1867, failed to find a publisher. He then showed it to his mentor and friend, the Victorian poet and novelist, George Meredith, who felt that the poor man and the lady would be too politically controversial and might damage Hardy's ability to publish in the future. So Hardy followed his advice and he did not try further to publish it. He subsequently destroyed the manuscript, but used some of the ideas in his later work. In his recollections in life and work, Hardy described the book as socialistic, not to say revolutionary, yet no argumentatively so. After he abandoned his first novel, Hardy wrote two new ones that he hoped would have more commercial appeal, Desperate Remedies and Under the Greenwood Tree, both of which were published anonymously, it was while working on the latter that he met Emma Gifford, who would become his wife. In 1873 A Pair of Blue Eyes, a novel drawing on Hardy's courtship of Emma, was published under his own name. A plot device popularized by Charles Dickens, the term cliffhanger is considered to have originated with a serialized version of A Pair of Blue Eyes in which Henry Knight, one of the protagonists, is left literally hanging off a cliff. Elements of Hardy's fiction reflect the influence of the commercially successful sensation fiction of the 1860s, particularly the legal complications in novels such as Desperate Remedies, Far From the Madding Crowd and Two on a Tower. In Far From the Madding Crowd, Hardy first introduced the idea of calling the region in the west of England, where his novels are set, Wessex. Wessex had been the name of an early Saxon kingdom, in approximately the same part of England. Far from the Madden crowd was successful enough for Hardy to give up architectural work and pursue a literary career. Over the next 25 years, Hardy pro Duke had 10 more novels. Subsequently, the Hardys moved from London to Yeovil, and then to Sturminster Newton, where he wrote The Return of the Native. In 1880, Hardy published his only historical novel, The Trumpet Major. Hardy published Two on a Tower in 1882, a romance story set in the world of astronomy. Then in 1885, they moved for the last time, to Maxgate, a house outside Dorchester designed by Hardy and built by his brother. There he wrote The Mayor of Casterbridge in 1886, The Woodlanders in 1887, and Tess of the D'Urbervilles in 1891, the last of which attracted criticism for its sympathetic portrayal of a fallen woman and initially it was refused publication. Its subtitle, A Pure Woman, faithfully presented, was intended to raise the eyebrows of the Victorian middle classes. A major location of the return of the native as part of Hardy's fictional Egdon Heath. Jude the Obscure, published in 1895, met with an even stronger negative response from the Victorian public because of its controversial treatment of sex, religion and marriage. Its apparent attack on the institution of marriage caused strain on Hardy's already difficult marriage because Emma Hardy was concerned that Jude the Obscure would be read as autobiographical. Some booksellers sold the novel in brown paper bags, and Walsham Howe, the Bishop of Wakefield, is reputed to have burned his copy. In his postscript of 1912, Hardy humorously referred to this incident as part of the career of the book, after these verdicts from the press its next misfortune was to be burned by a bishop, probably in his despair at not being able to burn me. Despite this, Hardy had become a celebrity by the 1900s, but some argue that he gave up writing novels because of the criticism of both Des of the D'Urbervilles and Jude the Obscure. The Well-Beloved, first serialized in 1892, was published in 1897.